Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited. JetSuite X delays KSMO service. Bell Helicopter confirms delay in relentless certification. EAA celebrates 25 years of Young Eagles. Hello, I'm Laura Hudson. It's February 3rd, and this is Airborne Unlimited. Well, we knew this was likely. JetSuite X has announced that they've entered into a standstill agreement with the city of Santa Monica concerning their upcoming planned operations at KSMO. The agreement is designed to give the parties time to come to some kind of a final agreement. Originally, flights to Santa Monica Airport were supposed to launch on February 6th with destinations like Carlsbad, San Jose, and Las Vegas. Due to recent FAA betrayals, however, JetSuite X has agreed to hold off until February 15, 2017. JetSuite X has canceled all flights to, from, or connecting through Santa Monica from February 6 through February 24 and will issue full refunds for all affected customers. CEO Alex Wilcox said, quote, Given the uncertainty surrounding the status of the airport, we have entered into the standstill agreement to provide time for an orderly process to negotiate with the city. We apologize to our clients, over half of who are Santa Monica residents, who have been adversely affected by the unprecedented recent events concerning SMO Airport. In just a few weeks, JetSuite X reportedly sold flights to over 1,000 customers, over half of whom were residents of Santa Monica and apparently who saw JetSuite X as a great solution to save hours of time and hassle flying from LAX. The city's surprise agreement with the FAA to shorten the runway and eventually kill the airport and all those aviation jobs was made with no public or user input. Bell Helicopter has confirmed that there will be a delay in the certification of its 525 relentless helicopter due to a tragic fatal accident involving one of its test aircraft last July. Bell says that the two remaining flight test aircraft have been grounded since the accident pending the release of the NTSB's probable cause report. Two test pilots were fatally injured when the test aircraft went down on July 6, 2016. Bell has reportedly not even performed ground runs of the aircraft since the accident. Larry Thamesh, vice president of 525 Sales and Business Development, said that the five-year certification window with the FAA expired late last year. That has been extended for two years, taking the program to the end of 2018. Another two aircraft are in final assembly, while the two existing aircraft are being upgraded to bring them to a production standard configuration. After the break, 25 years of Eagles is celebrated. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Explore no limits flying in the FAA certified Sea Ray Amphibious LSA. One of the top three best selling LSAs in the U.S., Progressive Aerodyne Sea Ray comes equipped with a Rotax engine and exhibits extraordinary handling on land, water, and in the air. Check it out at www.searay.com. Welcome back. If you have a story suggestion for Airborne Unlimited, Aero TV, the new AMA drone report, our website or podcast, just email to news-spy at aero-news.net. Among other auspicious events this year marks the 25th anniversary of the Young Eagles program. This program began in 1992 and has provided more than 2 million young people ages 8 to 17 with an introduction to the world of personal aviation. EAA has plans to celebrate this milestone and has planned a variety of events and activities throughout the year beginning with a special 25th anniversary exhibit in the EAA Air Venture Museum. The exhibit will share the history and impact of the Young Eagles program through photos, videos, and interactive displays. Air Venture 2017 attendees are invited to join EAA for a birthday cake celebration and show their pride in the Young Eagles program with special 25th anniversary t-shirts and hats that will be available during the convention. EAA will also host a Young Eagles volunteer dinner on July 26 to thank those who make the Young Eagles possible and successful. As a special thank you to pilots who fly Young Eagles during the anniversary year, 
EAA has created a commemorative prop card and set of decals. Pilots who fly at least one young eagle will also receive a letter of thanks from EAA. In addition, a special 25 for 25 pin will be given to pilots who fly at least 25 young eagles during 2017. And they will also receive recognition on the Young Eagles website. EAA promises that additional details will be announced as they are finalized. It's Friday and that means it's time for a and CEO and Editor-in-Chief Jim Campbell to check in with his weekly barnstorming commentary. This time, Jim is fighting mad over the FAA's apparent betrayal of the general and business aviation community and their willingness to abandon Santa Monica Airport and hasten its destruction. Here's this week's barnstorming. Thanks, Laura, and hi, folks. Well, they tell me the proper way to describe a good compromise is when nobody's happy. Well, in regards to Santa Monica, not only is nobody happy, but I can't say it's a good compromise, period. You could have knocked us over with a feather Saturday afternoon. We're down at Sebring. We're enjoying some drones. We're enjoying some LSAs. We're having a ball with some folks to, looking at some new goodies. And here it comes, surprise out of the blue, Saturday afternoon, not the time you normally get a presser from the FAA, basically saying the FAA is caved in. Now, I got to tell you, I've worked with Mike Huerta for a number of years. I uh, didn't have a great opinion in the beginning. It was starting to get much better. But with this one decision, this one act, Mike blew it. The FAA blew it. The FAA betrayed us all. And I have to tell you, of all the folks that we spoke to, not a single person, not a single organization, not a single entity, not a single pundit saw this coming. That's got to tell you that something's wrong. Further, outside of the fact that this was a secret announcement and a lot of the major stakeholders were not consulted, something happened in the last two weeks. If you listen to the Santa Monica City Fathers talk about what happened and when it happened, it's obvious that just in the last few weeks, something changed dramatically. What it was, we don't know. Huerta was an Obama appointee. Uh, he's obviously beholden now to the Trump administration. And since the decision was made, Elaine Chao has become the Secretary of Transportation. There's a lot of guesswork and rumor mill that says this administration and Secretary Chow will not allow this order to stand. And if that's the case, great. That's half the battle. Because no matter what happens, if it stands, there's going to be a war. If it doesn't stand, it's going to be a war. The other side, the anti-airport people, are venomous, nasty, don't care about the facts, and just want to kill airports. I've been talking to some of these people. They accuse me of killing their babies and poisoning their food and making noise. Uh, one of these guys was telling me I was an eco-terrorist and then jumped into his Escalade. I don't know. I don't understand exactly what's going on, and that's why my crew and a number of other folks helping us, AOPA, MBAA, EAA, among others, We'll be meeting in Santa Monica in a couple of months and trying to tell this story from start to finish and more important, bring clarity, not just to our side, but as much as we can to the other side and provide some pathways to the future. But the fact is this, we got screwed. We got betrayed. Something has to happen. And the one shining aspect of all this is it's been a long time since a major issue united the aviation industry and this may be it. Make no mistake about it, Santa Monica will remain an airport as long as we're able to do so, but more important, it's not closing without a fight. What say you? What do you have to say about this? What do you want to do? Are you willing to get involved? We'll have a lot more to say about this in the future along with the folks that we're working with. In the meantime, in no uncertain terms, we're raring for a fight. For the Air News Network Airborne and Aero TV, I'm Jim Campbell, and I'm not giving up on Santa Monica. After these messages, Trig Avionics announces new gear. Redbird is quickly becoming the industry standard for flight training. Since Redbird introduced its revolutionary FMX in 2007, colleges, universities, and flight training operations around the world have integrated Redbird products into their curriculum. It's time to discover what Redbird can do for you. Join the migration. Based on the popular Sling 2 LSA, the Sling 4 was designed to be the most practical and desirable lightweight four-place experimental aircraft on the market. Find out more about this 115 horsepower turbocharged airplane at airplanefactory.com. 
Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. Trig Avionics has launched their latest TT26 ETSO certified UAS transponder product. Trig says the TT26 is truly groundbreaking, providing four vital functions to support onboard autopilot systems. The OneBox TT26 contains a 250 watt Mode S transponder with altitude encoder that also operates ADSB out up to 70,000 feet. Rotor blade manufacturer Van Horn Aviation is taking several steps to minimize overhaul downtime on the company's new composite 206B main rotor blades, STC just a year ago. In addition to working with several composite rotor blade repair stations to provide authorization for main blade overhauls, VHA is also conducting fatigue tests to increase the time between overhauls to 5,000 hours. Airbus engineering employees this week joined county and city leaders, education leaders, and representatives of local charitable organizations to recognize and celebrate the 10th anniversary of the opening of the Airbus Engineering Center in Mobile, Alabama. A letter of agreement has been signed by representatives of Transstate Airlines, represented by ALPA and the Carrier's Management. The agreement addresses pilots' immediate economic concerns and also represents an attempt to stem pilot attrition and recruit more aviators. New hire first officers are now eligible for a $30,000 signing and retention bonus. Silva Air Patrol's busy Texas wing is flying in southeast Texas to help the Air Force ensure the safety and security of airspace around NRG Stadium for Super Bowl 51. In order to train U.S. Air Force fighters, air crews, and help them maintain their proficiency, Civil Air Patrol flies this aircraft into simulated restricted airspace, playing the role of trespassing aircraft as the Air Force jet crews practice intercept techniques. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. Lockheed Martin will cut the cost of the next batch of F-35 jets by about $600 million by building more of the airplanes in the next production run. A deal for the 10th production lot of Joint Strike Fighters is still in negotiation, but it could be made up of some 90 planes costing about $9 billion. That would drive the cost of each airplane below $100 million for the first time. Production runs of fewer airplanes have resulted in a cost of $107 million per copy. The larger production run will give Lockheed Martin more leverage in negotiations with its suppliers and partner companies. There are some 1,250 suppliers in 45 states in Puerto Rico making components for the Lightning II. President Donald Trump has been critical of the cost of the program and had a meeting with Lockheed Martin's CEO Marilyn Houston prior to his inauguration. In a statement released Monday, the company said, quote, we appreciate President Trump's comments this morning on the positive progress we made on the F-35 program. We share his commitment to delivering this critical capability for our men and women in uniform at the lowest possible cost to taxpayers. Well, that's our program for today. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed daily Monday through Friday with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. If you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe and do check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Have a great weekend. See you Monday.